Max Lichner. <coughs> I'm sorry, I will not be talking about politics tonight. Um, my feeling towards politics lately is uh, I think lawyers and politics don't mix so well. Uh, I don't want my house raided uh, in my office. Um, so I'm going to stick out of politics. I had this. I went for an oil change, and it was uh, earlier in the year when um, the Yankees were in the playoffs. And uh, you won't get a chance to watch these things, but there was a screen there, and I figured hey, maybe I could catch some of the Yankee playoff game. But the problem was it was on one of these political channels. And I, in the room were like uh, three or four women who didn't look like Yankee fans, to say the least. But I really wanted to see it, so I said, uh, is it okay with you ladies if I uh, change this to the Yankee game? Trump was on. And they're like, please, please, anything. We don't care. We want to just get him on. <laughs> so, I, you know, we were so in, uh, <coughs> exposed to the politics. We're going to give it a little break tonight, even though uh, Schneier has, uh, some, for some reason, deemed me as a political correspondent. Um, I also want to say that even though I haven't been here with Macha Russo lately, I still miss uh, CTC very much. And uh, hopefully we'll get back on track. But uh, I still feel very much a part of, of CTC. So um, we're in this period of Sphere Saoma. That's where we're in now. And um, we're all familiar with the, uh, some of the customs that we do, the shaving, the music, and so forth. Uh, but if you look in the Torah, it's actually uh, a different angle to Sphere Saoma and Shavuot than is usually focused on in public and what we know. And the uh, Sukkim in the Torah describe two Karbanas, two sacrifices that were brought at the beginning of Sphere Sa'imer and at Shavuos. When we say Sphere Sa'imer, what is the Imer? The Imer that we're all talking about is actually the carbon Imer. It was a carbon that was brought on the second day of Pesach, called the carbon Imer. And then the Torah says, count 49 days until you bring the next carbon. It's called the Mincha Chadasha Shte Alechem. And that's the way, actually, in the Torah, it describes the Sphere Sa'imer as bookended by these two karbanas. Now, the two karbanas could not be more different. The carbon Imer was brought from barley. And barley, definitely in those days, even these days, is not a fine wheat. It's a, it's a coarse grain that's mainly used for animal food. The Imer was also brought uh, as a matzah. It was a, it, that's how the carbon was brought in a very... It was not allowed to become chametz. In fact, it was brought on Pesach, so it definitely was not allowed to become chametz. The shtei lechem, in contrast, is brought from wheat, which in those days was the finest grain. And not only that, it's one of the only carbonas that was actually made into loaves of bread, to chametz. It was made into chametz. So what is the significance of this, these bookends? the coarse sa'ira barley that we bring to start off this countdown, and then the loaves of chametz at the end. So that's the, that's the question, that's the, what, 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 what I want to explain. And I'm going to um, explain that by bringing another Gemara, which seems also pretty uh, mysterious at first. The Gemara in Pesachim says that it quotes the Pesach about Zeus Tairas Behem of Aif. This is the, the laws of Behemoth of cattle and oif. And the Gemara says, whoever is Osek, whoever is Isaac in learning, in Tyra, they are allowed to eat meat and, and fowl and birds. So what does that mean? Why should, what's the connection between eating meat and poultry and learning? Why is that? Why is that? So the, both questions are answered with the same concept. And that concept is, is that we, as people, are part of nature. We're, we're one of the, in the, uh, the totem pole, we're pretty high, but we are, we live amongst animals, we live amongst, uh, but what differentiates us? Differentiates us from an animal. What differentiates us is our creative thought, our speech. And creative thought and speech that's elevated by the Torah, by following the laws of the Torah, the morals of the Torah, the philosophies of the Torah, we elevate ourselves above animals. 
So in, an animal, in the animal world, if someone is, if one animal is hungry, it just eats. But in our world, because we have laws, we decide what to eat, and we refrain from eating certain things. In the animal world, there's, um, you, if an animal gets hit, it strikes back. But we rise above that. Why do we rise above that? Because we follow a higher law. So that's the explanation of the Gemara that says, who is allowed to eat meat and birds? Who is allowed to kill another creature of this world? Only if you act like the elevated soul. If you act like an elevated creature by following the Torah, by following Hashem's laws, then you have a right to kill animals. You know, the vegetarians have a point. You know, why do we, why do we um, uh, kill animals, right? We don't kill human beings who can't communicate, right? Let's say you had a, a human being who couldn't speak. We wouldn't kill him. So an animal can't speak. We don't know what they're thinking. Why do we kill them? Because we're, we're on a higher level than animals, so that's why the Torah says it. But only, the Torah is really saying that vegetarians are, are correct to a certain point. A person who acts like an animal has no right to kill another animal. You're equal to them. But if you act above them, then you're on a higher plane. So that concept explains the difference between the two karbanas. This is a journey from Mitzias Mitzrayim to getting the Torah. We start off course and the carbon that we're being symbolized is that we're at a level where this is basically for, basically for animal consumption. The, the, the barley is the lowest form of grain, and it's not refined, and it's not improved, and there's no human touch to it. It's just brought as is, pretty much. Then, over the course of the next 49 days, we are supposed to elevate ourselves to the point where it's a different creation, where it's a, a man-made product above, like bread is, above what nature gave. So it's the same concept, it's this dual aspects that we have. We are animals of nature, but we can we have the ability to refine ourselves. And when we get above that, that's when um, we're really, we're really um, realizing our true potential. Um, and I just want to, uh, I don't know, if, I'm sure almost everybody's aware of the tragedy that happened recently to this young couple that was uh, killed in a car accident. Um, uh, our family was very close to them. We, we, these two uh, kids were, um, they were in our bungalow colony, and it was a, a from bungalow colony, but these kids knew each other since they were 10. And they, everyone always joked around that, that there was a potential for them to be a couple, and he was always coming after her, and she was always playing hard to get, even when they were 10. And um, when they got engaged, it was a real, it was an inside, it was hilarious to the people, all the people in the Bungalow County who knew them, because even though they did it in a, in, a, in a very kosher way, they never hung out boy, boyfriend and girlfriend or anything like that, but it was just, they, they, there were two souls that were meant to be together. So, um, the, 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 the Kala was, we shared a bungalow with her. So, it, it, I went to the Shiva with my wife, and it was obviously horrible, but one thing I, I had this <coughs> feeling when I was there was that um, the, the tragedy was unimaginable to, to anybody, but the way the family was reacting was in a really refined and dignified and elevated way. You mean this, the father just lost his daughter who was, was thanking everyone for coming, and they were following the halachas of Abelis. And the, um, the couple died right before Yantuk. So Yantuk, they didn't do Abelis. Now, the, uh, that to me, when I, when I saw this Dvar Tara, I thought, that's people who have transformed themselves from just the, going with the immediate reaction to tragedy. Is, of all things, one thing we can't control so much is how we would react to a tragedy. But these people were able to elevate themselves above the natural reaction, the natural just feeling of, 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 let's say, whatever the feelings would be. But they were able to follow in the Tara's way and act in a higher way. So, um, Mr. Shem, we should uh, be, be able to do this without tragedy and uh, raise ourselves above uh, by following the Torah and maybe bring the Mincha uh, Chadasha in the Beis HaMikdash, Mary Amenu.